What's up guys, Oscar Gomez here from Master Automotive Training, smartautotraining.com. It's Tuesday guys, can only mean one thing. What is it? Tech Tip Tuesday. So on today's Tech Tip Tuesday, we're gonna be talking about EVAP. What is EVAP? Why does it exist? And what are some of the components for EVAP? Go ahead and stay tuned guys, Tech Tip Tuesday starts right now. So starting in 1970, California introduced the EVAP system. The EVAP system's main responsibility was to capture fuel vapors instead of releasing them to the atmosphere. What is photochemical smog? So photochemical smog is NOx and hydrocarbons in the presence of sunlight with no wind. So when you guys walk outside of your house and it's not windy at all and all you see is brown haze, that is hydrocarbons and oxides and nitrogen in the presence of sunlight. So in order to reduce photochemical smog, we introduced the EVAP system. The EVAP system is going to be storing fuel vapors from the tank into a charcoal canister. Then, whenever the computer commands the vehicle to purge the system, those vapors are going to be sent to the air intake where they're going to be burned off and out through the exhaust instead of being vented into the atmosphere. One of the ways to remember the EVAP components are as follows. Your purge solenoid, which is usually located near, near the air intake and allows the vapors to leave the canister and go into the air intake, we call it the front door. Typically at home, you keep your front door locked, so the front door or the perch solenoid is always going to be closed. Your back door, which is your vent solenoid, which in theory you would keep your back door open, your vent solenoid is usually in the open position. The time we're going to close the vent solenoid is when we're pressurizing the system in order to check it for any leaks. Next component is the FTP or fuel tank pressure sensor. This is just a map sensor type style sensor, which will either detect vacuum or pressure depending on which type of system you're looking at. The FTP is going to let the computer know if there's any drop in pressure during an X amount of time. This is how the computer is going to determine if it has a leak or not. And if it does have a leak, depending on how much pressure drops over so much time, that's how it's going to determine if it's a small leak, very small leak or a large leak. So there are two different types of EVAP systems. One is going to be your non-enhanced, which was introduced in 1996, and it goes up to about 1999. So the non-enhanced system doesn't check for leaks, but it does check for flow. So if you're diagnosing a, a EVAP system that's between 1996 and 1999, the likelihood of you having a leak code is very slim. Some manufacturers did use leak codes, which was a PO440. However, um, not all manufacturers use them. Usually you would get a code for no flow or insufficient flow. At that point, then you're going to be checking your flow switch to see if the switch is opening and closing when it detects flow. And if it does, then that's not the problem. More than likely you got a leak somewhere. So non-enhanced systems begin 1996 up to 1999 and they do not check for leaks. Starting in 2000, model year vehicles are going to have an enhanced EVAP system. The enhanced EVAP system not only checks for flow, but now it starts checking for leaks. So if you have a leak on an enhanced system, a leak of 0.020 inches of water is going to give you a small leak. A leak of 0.040 inches of water is equivalent to a large leak. What the computer does is it's going to keep the vent solenoid open. That vent solenoid is going to allow fresh air into the canister. Once the purge valve in the front opens, that fresh air pushes the vapors out of the charcoal canister through the lines up into the intake where it gets burnt off. Now, if you have an, an issue where you have a leak, whenever the system closes the back door, closes the front door, and either applies pressure or vacuum to the gas tank, your fuel tank pressure sensor is going to be monitoring how much drop or if there is any drop inside the gas tank. If the FTP determines that there is a drop, then the PCM is going to monitor how long that drop existed for. Depending on how long that drop was there, that's how the computer is going to know if you have a small leak or a large leak. One of the most common faults with EVAP systems is the back door. Since the back door is usually open, when the computer commands it closed, that's when we might have some issues. A lot of times you get debris, mud, spider webs are very common inside a vent solenoid which prevents the solenoid from closing thus gives you a large leak. However, there is no leak, it's just a faulty solenoid. When it comes to diagnosing an EVAP system, it's very simple. Always remember, your front door is your purge solenoid. Always closed, only open during purging. Your back door, which is your vent solenoid, is usually open, only closed to check for leaks. 
Now that we know those basics, what are some of the other things? I always tell my students is look at your diagnostic trouble code. Is it telling you you have a leak or is it telling you you have a flow condition? If you have a leak, look at your code and see what size leak you have. Small, very small, or large leak. Depending on that, now you can use a smoke machine, seal the system, and then pressurize the system with your smoke machine, less than one inch of water, and then this way you can determine using smoke where that leak is. Repair the leak, reassemble it, rerun your smoke test, and see if you have any leaks. If you put it back together and there's no leaks, go ahead and take out your scan tool with bi-directional, run the service bay test, for EVAP, if it comes back complete with no pending codes, you successfully fix the issue. Now, a lot of technicians mistake leak codes for flow codes. If you have a perch solenoid flow code, you might want to check the solenoid to see if the solenoid is not being stuck open. If it's not being stuck open, you want to put on a lap scope and check this pattern to make sure the computer is not keeping it commanded open for some reason, indicating a damaged PCM. So you want to make sure that you can determine whether it's a leak or a flow condition. If you're in a shop that has a smog machine, always pull the gas cap off and run a functional check on the functional check on the gas cap to make sure that the gas cap's not the culprit. Always too, if you have a vehicle that comes in with a locking gas cap and it has an enhanced system, your first line of defense is putting the original gas cap back on. From my experience, 99.9% .9 of locking gas caps fail to seal the system properly, thus giving you an EVAP code. That's it guys, as long as you guys remember that the EVAP system is here to reduce hydrocarbons, the EVAP system has a front door that's usually closed, a back door that's usually open, and a fuel tank pressure sensor that's there to determine loss or decay of pressure within the tank, that's it. That's all you need to know in order for you to diagnose an EVAP system. EVAPs are the easiest things to repair as long as you understand the basics. And that's it guys, EVAP is that simple. The only thing is we tend to make things harder than what they really are. And I say we because I still do that sometimes. But now that you know the basics, any EVAP system is going to be the same. Always make sure that you guys look up your reference material before you don't jump into a Diag. But it's roughly the same thing. If you guys are following us here on YouTube, make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button. Don't go on to any other video without hitting subscribe. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like my video, give it a thumbs down. But let me know why you don't like it. This way I can see what I can do to fix it. If you guys are following us here on Instagram, make sure you guys are hitting that like button. Make sure you guys are letting everybody in the industry know about these videos because these videos are designed for one reason and one reason only, to make you the best. And that's my goal is to make you the best. The only way I'm going to do that is if I keep you guys following along on these videos so that way you guys can become the best. As always, guys, a good technician's always learning. Signing off here, Oscar Gomez, smartautotraining.com.